bum, 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 bum. It's Monday Night Football, man. Big deal. Tampa Bay, of course, hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. Rondy Barber getting his Hall of Fame ring at halftime. Are you kidding me? What more do you people want? And as a bonus, I think for me, the game starts early. That's yes, two the early night games. Game. Yes. Yes. We took a we got a break. We got seven fifteen, I think, p.m. So yeah, thank you for the extra hour of uh, writing and reporting that I'll have, and maybe even get to bed before three a.m. But this is a you know this is a very interesting game. I the one thing when they have Monday night games, I it, and it happened with more frequency, obviously, when Tom Brady was here. But the cool thing is for me is I get to sit around on Sunday and watch football. I never get to watch football because I'm always mm-hmm. watching the Bucks games and. You know what I saw on Sunday? A lot of bad ball. Like, a lot of bad ball, man. Like, mm-hmm. there were upsets everywhere and, and also some shocking scores, like Denver giving up 70-burger Ouch, babe. to Miami. God. that's So my, my, my daughter was sitting here talking. She goes, Dad, she goes, that's 10 touchdowns? I went, yeah, <laughs> it's 10. Usually you get the ball about 12 times a game. They scored 10 touchdowns. Well, when they got to 56, that set the franchise record for points. Right. And then they added two more touchdowns. Unbelievable. 1966, I think, was uh, the last time a team scored that many points. I mean, and you know, pick up your copy of How Salty is Sean Payton in, in the postgame uh, address. I mean, it was – there wasn't a lot he could say, but he did say, we're going to watch this tape. Oh, we're all watching this tape. And rightfully so, he's going to find out who was making business decisions out there. But that's the kind of game that your defensive coordinator may not make it on the flight back because that's just epically embarrassing. Um, and then, of course, I guess we'll just continue on the, the NFL theme for a second. We'll get back to the Bucks and the Monday night game against Philadelphia here in a second. But how about how about them Cowboys, huh? Ooh. They were they were. I'm telling you, of course, Dallas is always bigger. You know, everybody talks about America's team and all that stuff all the time, right? And I've done TV and I've done it on a national level, and you'll go in those meetings and it's mandatory. That's right. It's mandatory. It doesn't matter what their record is. It's like, okay, what do we got on the Cowboys? Because the Cowboys have such a following, they move the needle, and networks are going to talk to them, and they have a right to it, 2-0, and and they've been curb stomping. It was like, you know, 40 to nothing or whatever it was the other day. And then they go to Arizona, excuse me, like, legit Arizona was pretty much on everybody's power ranking. It's as number 32. I've seen the Bucks at number 31 a few times, but I have seen Arizona at 32 a lot. And, you know, what well, they got Dobbs at quarterback now that they picked up at the start of the season. He goes out there and beats the Dallas Cowboys. I really believe uh, my, McCarthy didn't put together a good plan this time. Dak throwing the interception in the end zone. It was... That's why, Steve, you don't bet on the NFL. You will go broke trying to figure yeah. out these games. How about Gardner Minshew beating the Ravens? How about that? Yeah. Took Matt overtime. Gay with a they, bomb for yeah. a touch for the game-winning field goal. That was something. How about the Saints was, up 17-0? They lose. give up 18 in the fourth quarter. And not only did they lose, they lost Derek Carr. For the foreseeable future. Now, it w- the, they took him to the hospital, and the results were not as bad as they had feared. But he does have a sprained right AC joint, which is your throwing shoulder. I remember when Jameis had that one time, and I, I don't know what the severity of cars is. Um, he was able to play with it. Like, I think he missed a game, but I can't remember. Um, and I, I believe that Carr will miss this week's game, which means Jameis will be playing next Sunday against his former Bucks team, which is always entertaining. But when Jameis kind of did it one year, um, it wasn't the throws that he made. It was the ones he turned down because you just don't have that, oomph, you know, uh, that power in your shoulder to throw the ball down the field as much. And, and so you have to be really selective because of various things, the pain, the velocity, all that. And so that's, that's where I wonder how it will affect Carr. But in the short term, I mean, Jameis got him in position for a game winning field goal. They just missed it. Now his first, I think four or five possessions they punted, which isn't necessarily very good, but give him a week of practice and the motivation of playing against his former team. And, you know, he might be, he might mm-hmm. be a problem, but um, it was a good day overall. I think Texans the, over the Jaguars. Yeah. Big CJ Stroud with a nice day. 
That was good to see. Mm-hmm. Um, the NFC South, I mean, the Bucks had a good day because New Orleans lost. Panthers um, lost and Atlanta Falcons lost. lost. And the Panthers lost, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if they win if they win tonight against the Philadelphia Eagles, they are not only they're one of the few three and O teams in the NFC, but they are your NFC South leaders. They are technically right now anyway, but uh, they would be leading the division. It'd be and them and San Francisco is the only undefeated teams in the NFC if they in win. In the NFC, right. And there's a few and in the AFC. Miami's the only undefeated in the AFC. Oh, well, are they the only one? Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so if not the, Ra- not the Ravens to lost today. And yeah. yeah. Dallas, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Just the way they drew it up, man. Yeah, there'll be three undefeated teams by the time tomorrow night ends because the Eagles are undefeated wow. as well. So one of the Eagles are well, – oh, assuming right, there's the not – well, I guess if there's a tie, there'll be tie, four undefeated. But, yeah, yeah. That's not likely. This Eagles game, I'll tell you, this is going to be interesting because um, the Eagles roster, they may have, would you just look at the names on those roster on that roster and you go through it, it, it might be the most talented roster in the league. Um, and there's so much depth, you know what I mean? Like they're bringing guys, you know, what the Jalen, was it, Jalen Carter's off the bench and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like they're so deep that they come at you in waves and, you know, they're NFC they're NFC uh, champions, and they and and they know they're good. And I think if there's if there's a a positive to to playing them this early, like week three, it's that they have two new coordinators, both on both sides of the ball, because those guys got head coaching jobs, and they kind of look a little out of sync in both sides. You know, they're not quite hitting it all up on on offense, and then they they you know kind of let back a big lead the other day on defense and so you just wonder if if maybe the newness of it uh is still there and maybe the maybe somehow the bucks can benefit from that but overall i mean it's a really good team now you know the bucks have had their number you know they beat jalen hurts twice two years ago and one of those being in the postseason being in the playoffs He's a different quarterback now with a lot different parts around him. You know, he's not only has he gotten better, but the team itself has really grown up. And so you can't really go by, you know, what happened. And, and this is a step up in class for the Bucks, especially for their offensive line. You know, like that defense that the Steelers have, it's not the steel curtain yet, but, you know, they lead the league in rushing defense. They're giving up, I want to say, 52 yards a game on the ground. The Bucks are second at 54. Um, you know, now playing with a lead helps, and that's what the Bucks have done. I'm sure that's been the case with the Eagles at times too. But I just can't find a thing that you would go, "Oh yeah, that's they're going to exploit that matchup," or "Oh yeah, the, you know, the Eagles have a definite sort of you know weak weak spot." They don't. I mean, they really don't. You're like, you're just going to have to find a way to outplay them, and if you can continue the pattern of getting more turnovers mm-hmm. than the other team and not turning it over yourself, that will play. Like, that can win. Um, but this this is going to be a different game than we saw at Minnesota or certainly against the Bears, who absolutely stink, by the way. They got destroyed again. Not that it was a surprise they lost, but you're going to lose to Kansas City. But they uh, yeah. they really got really Well, the got Bears and down. the Vikings, both the Bucks opponents are both 0-3. They're both 0-3, yeah. Yeah. And that, that Vikings game was crazy, you know. Like the Rams go for it thinking they're going to end the game at their the Chargers own 20s. Game. Or the Chargers, I'm sorry, yeah, I was thinking LA. The Chargers go for it and thinking they're going to end the game. and They don't get it, and they get the ball back. And, uh, you know, the ball ends up getting batted up in the end zone and, and is intercepted or the Chargers lose that game. So it was wild, man. It's a wild Sunday. Of course, the games are always close. They usually come down to the last possession or so. And the biggest news had nothing to do with football at all. Nope. Absolutely nothing. Even though there was a football game being played in Kansas City, it was all about Travis Kelsey and mostly about the girl in Kelsey's box, which was none other than Tay-Tay, Taylor Swift. Going nuts when he scored a touchdown. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean. I'm surprised the internet's still working. (laughs) Well, did you see the line of people that was kind of standing outside the stadium and hoping to catch a glimpse of uh, her tayness? <laughs> I mean, TMZ was there. 
Hollywood was Access Hollywood, all those I'm sure were there. And 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 you know, here's the thing, like I thought it was a joke, like when Kelsey kind of put out there, you know, he shot his shot or whatever. Turns out that stuff really works. <laughs> like she came to Kansas City to see what it was all about. And when he scored a touchdown, man, she was up there, you know, LFG and banging the glass and all this stuff. It's wild, man. But talk about ratings. Suffice to say, parts of that game, if not all of it, or the replays, uh, will be well received way outside the sporting community um, because there's no bigger star in the country than her right now. Nope. I mean, that's just, you know, it's, it's certainly her world, and she's going to be worth soon, if not already, over a billion with a B dollar. So, well, she's in her football know. era now. That's right. That's right. You know, we've already named the next album. This is true. My my uh, my girls were driving home. We go, what you get? Because it's all about breakups, right? Mm-hmm. So th- every 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 guy she dates, she ends up writing a, a you know a heartbreaking song, and then they get bad and all that stuff. So this one is easy. This one's going to be called Travesty. Ah, there you go. You like it? I do. Yeah, Travis Kelsey. So Travesty. So she's going to talk about what a travesty it was that you know she dated this guy and. You know, she'll say something about the Chiefs or, you know, something. I mean, I I could probably write the song like her, but yeah, travesty. That's that's my that's gonna be the next the next album, album number eleven or something like that, whatever it is. But it's incredible you can speak it into existence. <laughs> it's like, yeah, come to Kansas City. We got some stuff going on. It's it's pretty exciting, and it's like, yeah, there she is. Uh huh. She's there. So, uh, Kansas City rolled. What else I happened? I don't know how many of his teammates were waiting out to get a glimpse oh of her my afterwards. Oh, God. All right? <laughs> like, yeah, man. Like, who's who you, who's in your sky suite? No, suffice to say, no one's going to leave a ticket for somebody that's bigger than Taylor Swift. <laughs> I mean, geez. My daughter was asking me, she said, you, you know, do you think that, that because there's a whole, I mean, I don't need to tell you, she's the most popular entertainer in the, in, probably in the world right now, but in the country. She's like, how many Swifties do you think are NFL fans? I go, I have no way of knowing that. Like, a lot more now. But I said, you know what? This is the greatest thing that could happen to the NFL. They literally put together an icon in one of their boxes for an entire NFL game. And I, I bet the ratings were through the roof for that game. I can't wait to see when they come out because it would be stupid. You know, she can fill up 70,000 seat arenas in a minute. Imagine what she can do when people know that she's at a stadium and, and on TV. So, um, yeah, it, it was a it was a cool cool weekend. And like I said, the Bucks really benefited very greatly if they can finish the deal and win, because you had losses from all the NFC South teams, and mm-hmm. injuries to a couple of them. So, it was a good day for them. Now, can it be a good night for them? Well, I don't. I don't know. I, I really don't think it's going to be. I mean, you never say never, obviously. They're just going to have to play mm-hmm. one of the best games they've ever played in, in, in you know, the young Dave Canales era. Because cause here's the thing. Like, we know they want to run the ball. And obviously, this is not going to be easy to do against the best rushing team in the league. Mm-hmm. And so I think that offensive line's in trouble uh, with the front seven of Philadelphia which means that Baker Mayfield's going to have to do more. And the one thing that's been successful is that Baker has not had to do everything. You know, he, he's mm-hmm. been kind of a point guard. And his conversion, you know, his 87% conversion rate on third down is unsustainable. Um, but it's really been the secret sauce to them winning a, a couple of really close games. Because even the last game against the Bears, as bad as they are, was a field goal game. Um and the Bears needing, you know, a, a chance to to win it. Uh, and then the interception with Shaq Barrett and all that happened. But now you go, you know, to a, to a totally different level of team in Philadelphia. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I suppose it might not – I don't think they're going to roll over the Bucks necessarily. I just don't know where the points are going to come from because I, I feel like – it's going to be so hard to run that Baker's going to face a lot of third and longs, and I don't see him completing 87% or even you know 65% necessarily on third and long. That's going to be that's going to be a tough lift. And then defensively, 
look, I mean, the, the Eagles got all pros at every level. You know, they got two all pro receivers, um, running back, tight end, certainly the quarterback. And we don't know for sure as we do this podcast. You know, they got a bunch of guys that are questionable, including Devin White, right? Um, including Vita Vea and Carlton Davis and, you know, on and on. So if one or more of those guys can't go, that greatly affects your chances of winning. And they're already, what, five and a half, six point underdogs. Not that I'm into the spread, but that's about what it is. So I just feel like they've played two turnover free games. They'll need a third and they'll need to get some turnovers. But, you know, it, it's... You, you play the games, you're never surprised. Look at Dallas today against Arizona. Like, who would have thought that that the way the Cowboys were averaging 40 points a game or whatever it was, that they would lose to the Cardinals? And so that's why you, you can't just write them off against the Eagles. And it's Monday night, and it's at home. And there'll be a lot of Philly fans there, but it's still at home. And and Jalen Hurts hasn't beaten the Bucks, so there's some things psychological, said or unsaid, that might get to him. But I just feel like I feel like the Eagles are better. Let them prove me wrong. Let let them go three and zero because Steve, you were saying there's not many three and zero teams left. The Eagles are one of them. Would be one of them. They're one of the undefeated teams left. I should say they're yeah. It would just be the Niners and the Dolphins, which is incredible. Mm-hmm. So you have a chance to be one of the top three, you know, three best records in football. And those other two teams could well be the Super Bowl. It could be going all the way back to the Joe Montana, Dan Marino days where, you know, Montana wins his first and they're at the Coke machine in the ad the next week saying, yeah, I'll see you next year. Well, next year never came not for Dan Marino. Um, so this will be cool. This will be really – it's going to be an entertaining game. And it's always an event. Monday Night Football is great. I, I would assume it'll be a sellout. I would assume there'll be some Eagles in, in the in the stands as well. But um, this is what you love big games. And, la, you know, the last few years with Tom Brady, it was assumed. And they, they played their maximum number, whatever it was, five or what have you. And, you know, this year, this will be, you know, this and the Thursday night game at Buffalo are the only two national TV games on at night for them. So it's a chance to show Merca kind of what you can do. And I think they'll be up for it. I, I think they'll be up for the challenge. I think it's going to be an interesting game. I think it'll be a close close game, probably low scoring. Now, everything I'm just saying will, may not, you know, you bet at your own risk because I don't really know. But I think that these teams are going to struggle running the football and somebody's going to have to win this with their arm. And that's just kind of the way it feels like to me. But that's why they play the games, man. I don't really know. It, it could be anything. Boys, there's a lot of exciting football, though, over the weekend, not just in the NFL. How about college? Let's get to that in just a moment. But first, you already know it's hurricane season in Florida. We already had one through here, but there's still time to keep the power on without breaking the bank, and that's getting solar battery backup power from May Electric Solar. With solar battery backup power, there is no fuel cost, no loud generator noise, no annual maintenance cost. Plus, May Electric Solar offers you a 15-year warranty Solar battery backup can save you hundreds of dollars each month. And if you lose power, a generator could cost you over $2,000 a week just to keep your house up and running. Now solar battery systems also qualify for a 30% tax credit, or you can add a battery to your existing M-Phase solar system. Trust the pros in solar. To learn more about May Electric Solar Battery Backup or to just get started, call 727-819-2862 or visit mayelectricsolar.com. So college football is interesting. Florida State gets finally gets a win at Clemson, but not the way I thought it was going to go. Jeez. <laughs> uh, they go all the way into overtime and win it there. And, and actually, Clemson had this game, again, a missed field goal. Mm-hmm. It cost them in regulation, or they don't walk out of Death Valley with a, w, with a dub. But Florida State's living on the edge, man, as the, as the song says. They are. What, uh, Boston College, what, they won by two last week on the road, and then – on a bad football team, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, both those are road games, conference road games, so. Well, and Clemson's a house of horrors, right? Would yes. it have been 14 years or something like that? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it's at least that long, I think. Since they won up there, yeah. No, I was, I was impressed, you know, when they were fortunate enough to get into overtime. And really, you know, just during the game, there were moments that, that they were they were good. They looked like 
one of the top teams in the nation. Mm-hmm. But but if you take this week and last week at Boston College, it feels to me like they're going to have one of those games where they're not the other team will not let them off the hook, you know. Mm-hmm. And and there's enough good pl- good teams on this schedule where that could happen to them, including Miami. Um, we'll see what Florida is going to be about, but you just can't you can't put yourself in that situation. But they managed to get the win, and at the end of the day, that's what it matters. And you know they walk out of there mm-hmm. with a, with a victory. Well, so well, they get a bye this week. That's huge. And then they'll yeah. have three straight home games. Also helps. Against Virginia yeah. Tech, Syracuse, and Duke. Duke's right. a very Duke good team. Duke being a tough one, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I, you know, it gives you some time to kind of reset and, and you know, lay that foundation. And the three straight home, like I said, you just won two straight. They were closer than maybe you liked, but two straight road conference games. Right. And that's important. Yeah. Especially if one's at Clemson. I mean, that that's been the place where they couldn't win, and they, and they managed yep. to do it however they did it. Um, yeah. and, the, and the two toughest teams in conference they have left is, is Duke and Miami, and both those games are at home. Yeah, and they could they could take either one of those. So you're in good shape. You just don't want to trip up somewhere, and, and even with one loss, maybe you have a shot. They look, they look the part. Yep. It's, they, play, they played some close games. That's the only thing. I would say uh, congratulations to USF for finally – what was the streak? They had not won – Well, it was two years since they last won a game against an FBS school. Okay, but they they won one of those in three years under Jeff Scott. That was two Goodness years ago. Goodness gracious! And, and you they know were what? Dominant. They look, I, look good. They look good. And and I, I got to say, there was uh, a second half, and I think they were they were up a point or down a point. I don't remember exactly, but it was a mm-hmm. one point game. You uh, South Florida's driving down the field. They're at the one yard line. Right. They're getting ready to punch it in, and Naquan Wright fumbles it into the end zone. Rice mm-hmm. recovers, touchback. Devastating. You lose yeah. seven points there. Right. The next play, Rice throws it 80 yards down the field. Touchdown. That's a 14 swing. 14-point swing. But South Florida didn't didn't phase them at all. They didn't blink. They no. went right back out and went down the field. Like That that shows me a team that's bought in. Totally. That's, that's battling their butts off. Yep. Like That was impressive because that, that's one where – you know, it's easy for a team all of a sudden you're at home, you're getting ready to go up, and now it's a 14-point swing the other way in two plays. Like, that that can crush a team. Oh, shock to the system, yeah. And, and we've, we've seen it do that. And, and South Florida the last few years probably would have. Yep. But they didn't flinch. They And they went down and scored, what, three more touchdowns after that. Mm-hmm. No, and uh, and Naeem Simmons, what, 272 yards? Right. Eight catches, eight targets, eight catches, 272 yards. Huge day, yeah. That's, I think that's the most of any uh, state of Florida, at least FBS school uh, receiver ever. Wow. Really? Wow. Well, anybody at Florida State or Florida, Miami? Jeez. 272. That's a half a day. Yeah, that's impressive. That's really impressive. Um, then Alabama, it was funny because Lane Kiffin was talking a lot of crap during the week. So I thought Lane must know something. He must be going to know he's going to get over on Alabama. Not so fast, my friend, as Lee Corso would say. They took care of business. So a lot of great college football. And then the fighting Dion's a moment of silence for Wait, what, were they what were fighting to them. Well, not the, yeah, not fighting the Dion's Colorado. Talk about a step up in weight class. Yeah. Oregon just destroyed them. Look, I, I know it? everyone's piling on Dion and and Colorado. A little bit, a little bit. Anyone who thought that they were college football playoff bound this year mm-hmm. hasn't watched them. I mean, are they a hell of a lot better than they were last year? Absolutely. Is he? Is that an amazing turnaround of what they've done so far, at Colorado? Yes, absolutely. But they weren't in Oregon's weight class. We knew that going in. Anybody, right, anybody who said they were doesn't doesn't watch and see how good Oregon is, and see that Colorado, while you know Shador Sanders and and Travis Hunter, of course, is out a few weeks now, and, and some of the players they have, but even Dion has said it all. He was, I need seven or eight more dudes. I need dudes, yeah. He did or say dogs. It. He calls them dogs. I need dogs. dogs. That's right. You know, he, he know he knew he did, he didn't have now. 
Did you expect to be down thirty five nothing at the half? No, I, that's no. the thing. I think it was it was almost kind of embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you know, to kind of rub salt in the wound a little bit, Oregon's coach before the you know before the game was talking about how these guys over there they're in it for the clicks. Yep. You know, and how we're going to win it on grass and so on. And it just was. Yeah, I waited for that handshake, and I thought, uh. but the one thing Dion is is. You know he's he's prime and he and, and he he's focused on his team getting better and he's comfortable with who he is mm-hmm. and so you you can't attack him like you can guys try to attack him he's like look I'm good like I I made my money this isn't about me I keep telling you guys and then he goes out and makes it about him but realistically like he gets ball so deep down or maybe not even that deep down he knew that they weren't as good Mm -hmm. right like he knows what he has and he knows that the same will be true when they play usc yep you know those are going to be impossible games to win in many regards because he just doesn't have the dudes um but it's still important the way they're going about their business and they still have three wins they'll fall out of the top 25 that's okay Mm -hmm. it's colorado i mean yeah and they they got then they got to host usc this weekend right exactly and that that could be even worse than uh, than Oregon. It, it could really really speed up on them. What Dion's doing at Colorado is fantastic, and yeah, and it's gonna you know and and look, a lot of what he's doing is about recruiting, and it's about getting yep. the kids next year and the year after, whether it's freshmen coming in or transfers. You know, so he can have those seven or eight more dogs, as he calls them. Yeah, you know, and that's what you know that's what he's doing. But you see the improvements Colorado's made it shows you can coach. Oh yeah, and he can build form a staff, mm-hmm. and he's mm-hmm. he's done a nice job with those guys working, and yeah. you know he's the CEO of it. But yeah. in his first year, they're not there yet. They're not at Oregon's level no. or Washington or USC's level, and that's okay. But they're three and one, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and and they could do some stuff. You know, they could they could they could win some games this year, which is all you can really hope for. But it was it was over fast. <laughs> like that game was like wow. <laughs> Are you guys going to put up any resistance today or what? And uh, they really couldn't do it. So that that part of it, the fact that it was so lopsided, I thought it was a little disappointing. I was mm-hmm. hoping for a little better better show. And then how about the game of the night? Oh, Notre, Notre, Dame. Notre Dame's got to be kicking themselves. you got to win that game. You, well, you had them. You can't, on the last three plays of the game, have <laughs> ten men on the field <laughs> for three straight plays. Somebody, again – like Sean Payton's defensive coordinator should be fired. I mean, there's got to be somebody's job that says one, two, three, four, five. Have we got eleven on the field? And here's the weird thing: like the guys on the field didn't realize they didn't have eleven on the field. If you look at the touchdown run, mm-hmm. like they don't have any linemen on that side. There's like two dudes, man. Mm-hmm. It's a math problem, you know. That's all you got to do is addition and subtract. And but I mean, some, yeah. it happens occasionally that someone gets off and, and someone didn't come back on. It does. But someone's got to see that and go, next play, we better have 11 out there. I like, know. It happened three straight plays. As if as if no one bothered to look. Like, it's usually assigned to a, to somebody on, mm-hmm. you know, their staffs are about 100, play, 100 coaches long. So you, I'm sure there's an assistant to the coach in charge of substitutions or how many men are on the field or some such nonsense. But it didn't happen. It failed. Yeah, and, so. and they went prevent on that. With yeah, third and they're, long they're from like the the twenty five yeah. or whatever. And right. They've been they've been rushing all night and getting into McCord's face all Playing night. Coverage and rush, yeah. And, and then they went to they dr- they only rushed three and changed their personality. Buka caught it at the one and that ended the game basically. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. And then that and not enough men on the field will get you beat every time. Yep. How about Ohio State though? How about how about Ryan Day going off on Lou Holtz? <laughs> 90 90 something year old Lou Holtz who was on I don't know game day or some such thing I, I suppose like one of the days he was on game day and I mean Notre Dame's a rival with everybody Notre Dame's Notre Dame right and then whether it's USC Ohio State whatever they don't they don't care about those programs but Lou started in on Ohio State and he was talking about yeah, they don't win the game. They're not very tough. That's why Ohio State loses all the time. They're not, they're not a tough team. And uh, you know, and then Ryan Day, after they lose, he lo- he like lost his stuff, man. He's like, he's got the sideline reporter and he's 
he's like visibly shaking emotionally, and he's like, "Let me tell you what, where's well, a tough team over there? That's a tough. Where's Lou Holtz now? Where's Lou Holtz?" I'm like, "Ah, uh, he's like 90, man. He's probably in bed. You know what I mean? Like, calm down, big guy." I also, I also like how they said it's a rivalry, Notre Dame and Ohio State. And they're two of the most legendary programs in history. Sure. Big it, was, it was the eighth time they've played. That's it. Yeah. Eight times. Like USC and Notre Dame's a rivalry. They yes. play all the time. Yes. Not, not Notre Dame. Ohio State, come on. Yeah, Notre Dame and Navy's a rival, although it's very lopsided, but they play all the time. Notre Dame and yeah. Michigan have played a lot. Notre Dame and Michigan State's played a lot. Yeah. But yeah, they played eight times. I mean, they're, they're storied programs, and no question the history and all that. Oh, big Absolutely. brands, yeah, but. sure. And then Lou was, Lou was trying to give his credibility because he, he was saying, you know, I work for Woody Hayes. I work for Woody Hayes at Ohio State. So I'm not, I'm not saying I was, I was at Ohio State, you know. They put their pants on the same way we do. But it was... Ryan Law, he had to apologize because he was out of breath after the game. <laughs> he goes, let me calm down now and I'll answer some questions for you. <laughs> He's just going nuts. There's something about of something about that coach. And you, 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 of course, you're a Michigan guy, and so you hate the Buckeyes anyway, I'm sure. But there's something about him that seems like it, this is a little too big for him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, they won games, they've been in national championships and all that. There's something that feels like it's just he's not going to be that like that next guy. I don't know why I feel that way, but I do. <laughs> I can't explain it. Well, you know, let's not forget is, you know, he's been the coach at Ohio State for, you know, whatever, four or five years, whatever A couple it is. couple years, yeah. Those are his first head coaching job. And I think that matters. I think you hit it on the head. I mean, you know, he's still – he hasn't – he's still figuring it all out, like – you know, right, most coaches, most coaches start you know, start at a lower level. I mean, Urban Meyer was at Bowling Green in Utah sure, before he got yeah. to Florida, oh, yeah. and Ohio State, oh, yeah. and you know you work your way up. Yeah. I mean, you know, go through any of the legend. You know, Deion Sanders didn't start at Colorado. I mean, he's you know, no, he's a, yeah, you no, know, Ryan Day was a coordinator State. at Ohio State, and then you know, and, and is a very successful one in that. But you know, he wasn't head coach before. No, like, that's right. Like you know, some of this is him figuring it out. Right. But it was it was a entertaining as hell game. I mean it was drama right to the end. I knew they were gonna run the ball there though. And and to not have enough guys, not once, not twice. But like the dude next to you should look around or the Mike linebacker or somebody go, Hey man, we're missing like a lineman on this entire side of the field. He's not where he usually lines up next to me. Like somebody should have said something. You're you know, if it, it just was bizarre. That it would happen three times, but yes, it did. It happened three straight times. So that's crazy to me. Meanwhile, the Rays uh, they lost a uh, a tough one and lost a series to Toronto, which might be their first round opponent. They've clinched the first wild card in the American League. It most still likely a, will be their first round opponent. Yeah, and, and still a very remote, and I mean very remote chance with five games left that they're going to win the AL East. Let's be honest. But more importantly, or maybe more pathetically in some ways, they've lost yet more players. Mm-hmm. How many people can get injured before they make it to October? Well, Randy Rosarena went out Friday night. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, Harold Ramirez goes into left field and throws a runner out at home. <laughs> his first outfield assist ever in his career. I love Harold. <laughs> He's, what a year that guy's I said, had. Huh? Rename it Harold Land. Let's go. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, but Randy Rosarina, it sounds like he's probably going to be fine. He'll probably play Tuesday in Boston. Yeah, maybe could have played Sunday. Yeah, like quad but with the, but with the off, yeah, like with that. the off day Monday. Yeah. You know, give the extra time. Yandy Diaz left with what they said is hamstring tightness. Yeah, that's been that's been a thing all year, and you know, talk about it. Mark Tompkin wrote about it, and um, he was named uh, the Rays MVP, and that of course is a sort of a duh kind of award, if you will. Mm-hmm. But he is the straw that stirs whatever drink that they're having at the bar because this this cat leads off, hits with power, gets on base, you know, plays. I mean, he, and, and he's a leader, you know. So I, I don't know. I really don't know how they would navigate this without him. Um, but they lost, you know, Josh 
or uh, not Josh Lowe. Thank God they didn't lose Josh Lowe. Mm-hmm. Brandon Lau is yep. now out for the foreseeable future. He's basically out for the season. I mean, it, it was four to six weeks. I suppose in that timeline, if you make the World Series, he might be able to come back. Right, right. But realistically, he's he's done. I mean, it's just been like, mm-hmm. you know, one player after another. How about the kid they brought up from double-A? Junior though? Caminero, the first time the Rays have ever called up a position player straight from double-A to the bigs. That's crazy, man. Uh, and looked I love pretty good. Videotape. Looked pretty good in his two games. Uh, got his first hit on Saturday, first RBI on Sunday. Hits the Another ball hard. Night. Yeah, yeah. They, they Reminds said, me that – They said that uh, Neil Solance was telling me, if you took his average, average exit velocity in the minors this year. Now, it's against minor league pitching, so maybe not yeah, whatever. apples to apples double comparison. A, yeah. Yeah. It would be the seventh highest in Major League Baseball. The seventh highest this year? Of exit velocity on oh my God. balls in play. Oh. oh, my God. So he's crushing like it. He hits the ball hard. Yeah. Well, as young as he is, I think he's all of, what, 20 years 20, old? 20, yes. Like Just yeah. turned 20 in July, I believe. He's handling it pretty well. I love the videotape of him being told. He was completely, like, you see these these videotapes, and you think, yeah, that guy knew. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and they had just lost in the playoffs. Yeah. So their yeah. season was over. It was sort of a farewell speech he mm-hmm. was being given in the clubhouse. Yep. Yeah, and his teammates <laughs> oh, went nuts. And... Oh, it was so cool. It was like, you're going to the major. What? What, what me? <laughs> yeah, it was good. And then you're in the lineup, and then before you know it, you got your first hit. So that very still, I'm a sap for that stuff, man. Mm-hmm. I love those videos. Love seeing Yeah, give me those guys getting called up or the, the yeah. walk-ons in college getting scholarships. or Right. Yeah, those are great, you know, somebody that earns something. It's really cool. But, yeah, the Rays this weekend, a little disappointing, but they had the, scored first in all three games, only won one, and that took a walk-off to win that with Josh Lowe. Well, but let's be honest. I mean, what the hell happened to Pete, Pete Fairbanks the other night? Ooh, what, didn't retire a batter, three walks, and a hit batsman? I mean, he was just laboring like it was visible it was like almost from the time he went on the mound i, th- I said to myself like his face was red. i was like this dude don't look like he's ready to pitch no he, had, he hadn't pitched in six days and i don't know if that, that impacts might have, it. maybe that had something to do with it i don't you know, know. So that, that was, was saturday thought. and he hadn't pitched since the sunday before so right right i don't know if that had anything to do with it but get it I out of your system now i guess is what the race i guess say. it was bad but you know if the fingers go numb and in the cold of uh that's what i asked i said was the air conditioning at the trop too cold or <laughs> right <laughs> something happened yeah oh they, they, I, they unveiled the statues this uh weekend of aki and in, in longo okay now i saw pictures of them how do they look mm-hmm. in person are they great yeah they're good they're good yeah. i didn't i didn't go up real close to them on sunday as i walked oh, okay. by but i saw them from afar yeah. but yeah right outside Neat. of gate uh four there that's kind of neat, I think. Yeah. And Aki was in attendance. Yeah, he was. Evan is with the Giants. Yeah. <laughs> so, or no, the Aki, Apparently, Aki the had to travel Rocks. 24 hours just to get to Tampa. Oh he came God. in from Japan. So. Oh, that was That's what I did when I went the other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. I know it well. It's horrible. It's an eternity. Yep. But it was cool he was here. And the statues look great. I thought they looked great. They captured the moment of Aki stepping on second with the ball in his hand. And, mm-hmm. um, of course, Longoria. With that classic, you know, pose after the home run and going around the bases. Yep. So, really well done, thought out, nice. Yep. And the Rays are have now clinched the number one wild card. At worst case, they still can win the division. They're two and a half back with five games to play for the Rays, six for the Orioles. But at worst case, they will host the wild card round, which is three games at home, best of three. Well, here's the thing: if they win out. They could win a hundred games, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're ninety-five and sixty-two currently, so they could they still get to another hundred games, and you still don't win the AL. I mean, geez, or the AL uh, East. I mean, that's Baltimore is the outlier, man. Yeah, I mean, Baltimore that's... is what are the ninety-seven and fifty-nine. Yeah. So if you want out, you have to hope Baltimore goes two and four the rest of the way. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Tough sledding right there. Because they have sure. the tiebreaker. So. And most likely you're going to face the Blue Jays in that first round. Uh, Houston, Seattle are battling for the third wild card now, and they play each other this week. So, uh, you got to hope you survive Toronto. They just they can bash, though. That's the only thing. Mm-hmm. But Well, handle. I mean, here, here's the thing. If you're the Rays, and, and whether this is good or bad, mm-hmm. your first two opponents, and that's assuming you win the first one, right, would be Toronto and Baltimore at this point. Yeah, okay. Two teams you know well. But they know you well. They know you well, and you've not had great success against one of them. 
Well, Baltimore, what? You lost the season series by one game this year. Yeah. It was like seven to six. Right. Uh, Tor- I don't know what the season series with Toronto is off the top of my head. It just feels like you don't want to have to play an AL East team that early in the in the postseason, you know? Yeah, I think you'd rather play someone else. But that's the other, the other divisions weren't as good. I mm-hmm. mean, this is the thing. They're they gonna they're gonna win. They could win a hundred games. A hundred. And not get to host, you know, not get the bye week or not get mm-hmm. the um you know the AL the AL East or yeah the AL East crown. I mean, yep. you you win that many games. To think you can win that many games and not be the best record in baseball, forget about your 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 division. But you know, it was it was an interesting year from that standpoint. Their record is sick. I don't know how they did it because they did it with so many different players. But well, they lost three fifths of their pitching staff. Uh, yeah, and I mean not just anybody, but like you know, dudes are Cy Young candidates and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it's incredible what they've done. And they should be they should they should be proud because the season has not gone the way anybody would script it. And Kevin Cash, I don't, you know, he he's a saint for being able to withstand all these things that seem to go wrong during the game, after the game, before the game, all that. And and they keep plugging plugging along, man. He's possibly won another hundred games. So, um, but it is a different season, and maybe they'll get some people back fresh for that, and and take it from there. But. Mm, I don't know. It's been fun to watch. It's just you just you just wish they could have finished the deal. And and you know, had they had a little better finish now, even they could be a two and a half back as we do this podcast. It could have been one, one and a half, whatever it is. And and you know, with an outside chance of getting some help somewhere, but um, that's not likely to happen. So, okay. On all seriousness, let's paint the picture. You ready for this? The Dolphins, who are a scoring machine have the most prolific offense in football week 13 and Tua Tungavaloa goes down and he's out for the year yeah you tell me any guy in south florida might pick up that phone i don't know man with that with that talent around him here you go tyreek here you go you know so uh, i don't know man but he's obviously aware and the Dolphins are sick right now their offense how about the fact that you could have Kyle Shanahan with the best offense in the NFC and his protege in Miami with the best offense in the AFC which is pretty cool it's very cool yeah well unless you're the Bucs and you like, you want to have the yeah. best offense there well, you'd like to have it too yeah <laughs> which takes us back to the beginning and it is Monday Night Football which is exciting I was in the uh, media room the other day and uh, you know we have a rest, uh, like a nice kitchen there, and, and, and some restrooms and whatnot. And occasionally, people from the, the main building will come through there. And all of a sudden, I look up, and it's Joe Buck. <laughs> Joe Buck's here, man. It was cool. Um, met him before. He's a nice dude. But like, yeah, the A team they got Joe and Troy Aikman for this one, and they're the first of the of the doubleheader mm-hmm. on Monday Night Football. I have a funny so, story about Joe. This is back in two thousand five. Okay. So I'm working with the Atlanta Braves, and we're in Philly. Right. So I, I walk into the Braves clubhouse with Chip Carey, mm-hmm. who, of course, his dad is Skip Carey, his Skip grandfather Carey. is Harry yeah. Carey. Yeah. And it was a Saturday afternoon game. Fox was doing the game. And so we walk in the clubhouse, and a couple of players around the table, and there's Joe Buck and Tim McCarver. And so we walk in, and Joe Buck looks up and goes to Chip and goes, Hello, fellow nepotite. <laughs> I'm only here because my dad was here. That's great, fellow nepotite. You know, oh hey, you know, own it. Yeah, man. I don't believe what I just saw. I mean, the great. I mean, the, I mean, it. The funny thing is, there are certain announcers, and Joe's probably one now at this point. I would imagine, um, but there are certain announcers like Jack Buck that. You heard them on the radio or TV for years and years, and they had this very distinct sound. Mm-hmm. And then for so long, the, the St. Louis Cardinals trained at Outlang Field in St. Petersburg, and I, I would go to the game, sometimes cover them or write a story about something. And I'm sitting in the media. It was always a media lunchroom, right? It was small and cramped, and they basically had sandwiches. But the door swings open, and you hear them before you see them. 
And it's like, you know, well, what do we got for lunch today? It's tuna again. You know, he's like, wow, I know that voice. That is that is the one and only Jack Buck. Mine was uh, Harry uh, Harry Callis. Harry Callis, in, yeah. In Philly, all of a sudden was, you know, doing yeah. a game there. And, you know, as you're around the corner, there's Harry Callis talking about something. You're just like, whoa, I know That's that voice. Right. Yeah. Home run to- from Michael Jack Smith, you know. I'd hear him on the Sunday Smith. NFL games he'd do on oh, the yeah. radio. And he was a voice for NFL films for years mm-hmm. after uh, yep. they changed John Jonathan Sendout. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Harry was, Harry was again, a recognizable, incredible voice. You know, that's that's a lot of fun to uh, to encounter those guys. So we got, we got Joe Buck. We got Troy Aikman. We got Monday Night Football tonight. And it should be a good one. At least you hope it's close. You hope it's competitive against the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll be back to talk about that uh, tomorrow after a uh, what will be a late night, I'm sure, uh, this evening. And then, uh, yeah, and then where are the Rays headed? They get uh, off day today. Then they're in Boston for two. Then they'll have another Boston. off day Thursday. And then the Toronto to end the season. Toronto. So five games remaining. It's still a chance to win 100. Can you imagine that? You still win 100 games, man. Incredible season for them uh, record-wise once again. Thanks for listening. Um, we'll talk to you after the game or at least on uh, t- Tuesday morning whenever you, you take your podcast. But we'll break down we'll be a the late Bucks night. and the Eagles. It'll be a late night. That's what I'm trying not to say. Not as late as with the 7 Not o'clock bad, though. Yeah. 7.15. I, I, this is something I want to continue. I don't, I'm not crazy about the doubleheaders on Monday Night Football. But I do like the 7.15 start. I hope they continue that for, sort of, for whatever reason. Well, I think at least any ones that the Bucks are in. That's right. Which is one this year, but um, we got a Thursday night game, and that's about it. Unless I think they flexed. can flex on Monday nights later. They in the can season. be flexed later in the season, yeah. That's always a possibility, but this will be a good test for Baker Mayfield and the boys. Looking forward to it. They go three and zero. They might be flexing some games. Well, yeah, they'll be flexing their biceps if they go three and zero. Not too many teams will be undefeated after uh, after this Sunday, as as we saw a lot of them go down. Thanks for listening again. For Steve Ersnick, I'm Rick Stroud of Tempe Times. Have a great day, everybody.